Hello, welcome to ZTalk. Uh, we're going to continue on our discussion about uh, GitLab CI. It's going to be our last one uh, for this series. Okay. Uh, in the last two sessions, we went through the basics of GitLab CI and we were able to build a multi-stage pipeline which includes uh, deployment and testing. If you're new to GitLab and uh, haven't got a chance to take a look, please feel free to watch them first. I put the link above so you can uh, quick jump over there and take a look. All right. Uh, in this session, we're going to create another multi-stage pipeline for a Java Spring Boot application deploying on AWS Elastic uh, Beanstalk. If you haven't heard of uh, or haven't used uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk, basically it's an orchestration service offered by AWS for deploying applications which orchestrates various AWS services, including uh, EC2, S3, CloudWatch, Autoscaling, and uh, Elastic Load Balancer. So basically, Elastic, uh, Elastic Beanstalk provides an additional layer of abstraction over the bare Seren OS so that users see a pre-built combination of OS and platform. All right, so let's quickly jump to the demo. Um, remember, so uh, f uh, thumb up my video and uh, subscribe my channel if you have, haven't done so. And feel free to comment if you have any questions. All right, cool. Let's uh, jump over to the uh, demo real quick. Okay, let me uh, first uh, introduce this demo Spring Boot application cars API real quick. Uh, it's built by Gradle. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, uh, don't worry about it at all um, because it's not the point for this session, right? So basically, Gradle and Maven are the most popular uh, application build automation tools for uh, software development. It controls the development process in the task of uh, compilation and packaging to testing, deployment, and publishing, all right? Uh, I, I share uh, I shared this code uh, this link uh, to the uh, code repository on GitLab uh, in the description of this video. So feel free to download and uh, play with it. All right, uh, everything has been configured. So even if you are not familiar with the uh, with Gradle, uh, just follow my lead. Uh, you should be good. Uh, all right. So so back to this demo app. Uh, let me uh, start it by Gribble first. So let me uh, uh, first uh, open these app by IntelliJ, which is my favorite um, IDE for uh, Java application. So here, um, let me first uh, start this application. Just click Rattle and um, Task application. Uh, just double click a boot run. So this application will be uh, started automatically. Let's give it a little bit of time because it's the first time run, so it's going to view this application first, and then we should be able to uh, see it after running. All right, and as you can see, you can see Tomcat started on port 5000 and started car. App cars application uh, in 3.7 seconds something all right so it's already started and uh, let's go there and just type in localhost 5000 and as you can see it's already up and running but it seems not doing anything right uh, yeah that's actually it is so basically what this application does is to expose an API uh, that allows you to uh, add value or remove cars from a database. And an API uh, is a program that does not have a GUI interface like, like, a, like a website. But uh, API can be used by a front-end application or a mobile app to display data in the process or, or an app uh, in various cases. It's because you can view data in the browser 
we're gonna use a software development uh, tool or API testing tool uh, called Postman, uh, which is free to uh, free to download and install. Uh, here is Postman. Just uh, Google Postman, and you will get it. Uh, and also, I'll share uh, this download link on the uh, in the in the description of this video. So go he go there and download the uh, download the um, Postman on your local. All right, cool. All right, let's jump back to uh, the IntelliJ IDE. And as you can see, the application is still up and running. So if you remember, right after I click this boot run uh, here by Gradle, basically Gradle takes care of the rest. He, Gradle is going to build the application first so that we can run the application from our local. All right. So I'm not sure if you notice that the right after I double click boot run to uh, build and run this application on the left side, there was a folder called build being created. Basically, that's uh, Gradle uh, build this application for us. All the code is in is stored inside of this build directory. All right. Uh, cool. So uh, as I can see, uh, there is no um, uh, front end for these application and everything is on the API base. So we need to uh, use, use another uh, tool called Postman, uh, which is the API testing tool or uh, uh, software development tool. Um, uh, we're going to use this uh, uh, tool to uh, review the application. All right. So once you installed, uh, let's open it up here. Um, what you need to do, you need to import the configuration uh, to Postman so that you can uh, basically uh, run uh, each of the functionalities. Uh, here, uh, once you download the uh, repository to your local, and I create a folder called Postman right here. So inside of it, I already uh, shared. I shared all the. Uh, configuration uh, for Postman, uh, so to to hook up with this this application. All right. So what you need to do, you need to copy or or just uh, copy the location of these two files. One is uh, uh, card API uh, collection. One is the environment variables. All right. So copy the location of these two files and go back to your Postman interface, and you need to create a collection. So you can just create a new and give a name like like what I did right here. I create a new collection and give it give the connect uh, the name of this collection as cars API. And then what I need to do, I need to import these two files. Uh, all you need to do is pretty straightforward. Just click import and give the location of these two files, and or just drag to here. Then you will get those functionalities, right? It's, it's all preset for you. So once you import these two JSON files and you can just go through each of the functionalities like the the, the CRUD basically is create, remove, update, and delete. Basically, it shows you the functionalities what this API can uh, provides. So for example, get. We, we want to get all the cars. So what we need to do, we just click this API and click send. And you can see in return, we got all the um, the uh, cars in the database. Uh, it's return. Uh, it, that's what return via this API. All right. That's basically what Postman uh, does. Uh, it helps us to to verify if the post uh, the each of the function and or each of these uh, API uh, it works as expected or not. All right, pretty simple, right? Okay, so once we know that, we can uh, move uh, move forward to build or uh, or um, uh, pipeline. So here uh, again, like the uh, like the um, uh, how we build our pipeline, we need that special. Uh, YAML file called uh, .gitlab -ci .yaml, right? Here I put in some um, um, uh, framework uh, we're gonna build for uh, for this session. We're in this uh, session we're gonna build a 
one, two, three, four, five, five stage uh, uh, pipeline for this application. We're gonna go through build, uh, task, deploy, uh, post deploy, and publish. Uh, similar like what we did in the last session, all right? So the only difference is this time we're gonna build and deploy on Amazon uh, AWS um, Elastic Beanstalk, all right? Um, cool. All right, uh, before we start building our pipeline, um, <clears throat> let me uh, stop this application here. And as I mentioned, uh, Gretel as the um, build automation tool, it manages the whole process of software development. It's not a, only able to you know uh, build the application, it also able to uh, clean the application, run the tasks, and everything it takes care. All right, so, uh, as I mentioned, once I click this boot button, there was a build folder being uh, generated, right? Let's revert it back to what it was. So basically what we can do, uh, we can go to terminal and just do a Gradle uh, uh, clean. So once we issue this command, uh, the build uh, directory will be cleaned up. It will be removed basically. So let's do a uh, refresh and we can see uh, the build uh, directory is gone, right? Um, <clears throat> and like another thing, uh, bro, like I mentioned, Gratto is able to run the tasks for us as well. So yes, so if you can see in the, 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 the code, and there are two uh, unit tasks being created right here, so we can run these uh, tasks uh, by Gradle. So what we need to do, we just need to uh, issue the same command, Gradle W, and uh, test. So it will automatically take care of uh, run the task for us. So basically, that's um, what Gradle is capable of doing for us. All right. So now uh, we already revert the application back to what it was. So let's uh, jump back to the GitLab CI YAML file so to start building our or pipeline. All right, we went through the basics, how do we use uh, Gradle to uh, build, uh, start, and test our application. Uh, so we're good to start uh, to build our pipeline. Uh, let's start with the build stage. Uh, as I mentioned, the build process will take the source code and transform it into something that can be executed on the computer. Uh, we call uh, this process uh, compilation. Uh, in this case, uh, the build process will uh, translate the source code into Java bytecode that can be executed on a JVM, uh, which is Java Virtual Machine. Uh, right? The output of this build process is a jar file, uh, which is an archive that uh, contains the jar, this Java bytecode. Uh, what I just demoed, the build pr uh, process was kicked off by uh, Gretel uh, right up, right after I double click the run uh, the boot run uh, on the right side, right? You can uh, here. You can uh, you can actually also start the build process by uh, uh, Gretel uh, by uh, CMD, uh, which is uh, Gretel W uh, build. So right after you uh, click this uh, hit uh, this command, it's gonna uh, kick off the build process. Uh, let's give it a little bit of time. So after that, same thing, we should be able to see a build directory being generated right here. So let's do a fresh, refresh, and here we go. Uh, you can see the build process is, uh, uh, is being created and all the uh, jar file is uh, contained inside of this uh, uh, build directory, like this guy, cars API jar. All right, cool. So now we understand how do we uh, uh, build our application. So that's basically the command we're gonna uh, we're gonna use in our pipeline. So let's jump back to uh, the uh, GitLab hyphen CI that YAML file to uh, finish up the build, uh, build stage. 
Okay, okay. Back to the um, uh, the GitLab uh, hyphen CI the YAML config file, right? Um, these uh, these uh, task uh, build task belongs to build stage, right? That we define in the beginning here in the beginning uh, of the configuration. Uh, we're gonna include it here um, as stage equals the build, and because uh, it's a Java application, uh, we're gonna need a Docker image uh, that contains Java JDK. Uh, uh, I chose Open JDK version 12 and uh, the Alpine version of, of uh, in in this case, and and then we move to the main aspect of this build stage. Uh, so as of now, don't worry about these three um, lines just yet i'll explain uh what they do uh, uh shortly and here as you can see um uh, uh we uh the commands will be uh, uh, w w uh that will be used uh is exactly identical as what we tested locally just now right uh, we, uh it's gradle uh w uh, as wrapper so that slash gradle wrapper build command all right and last but not least here, um, um, you want to specify the artifacts so that the, this build job will save the artifact after completion uh, to the location build lips, which exactly the same um, when we test locally, uh, build lips. This is the artifact, right? That's exactly what we needed here. Cool. That's pretty much build process. And then we move to the next job, uh, which is uh, task stage. So we're gonna do some tests to make sure the build was successful, all right? So that's why I call this job smoke test, and the stage belongs to test right here. And we're gonna use the same image, uh, Docker image, OpenJDK 12. Uh, and uh, for testing, how do we test it? Let, uh, let's uh, take a look locally first so basically what we're gonna test we're gonna um, uh, let me uh, start this application uh, locally first so that we can test uh, how do we uh, test it right so uh, after uh, double click boot run so the application is up and running so what we can do uh, is we can just run this command curl um, localhost http localhost port 5000 and actuator health basically um, once you issue this and you can see stat, uh, status equals to up basically this act actuator health uh, expose the status of our application. So as you can see, uh, the status showing up, which is a a place we can use uh, we can use to test out if the build uh, stage or build job uh, build the process that uh, build our application successful or not, right? So that's why back to our job, we what we can do we can before the script we need to. Um, uh, install curl because we're we're on the uh, the the open JDK Alpine image, but uh, out of box curl uh, uh, is not uh, does not come out of box with this image. So that's why we need to install curl first before scripts. Uh, we're gonna install curl by ap uh, apk uh, at command, and then back to jump to the main aspects uh, so we're what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna issue uh, these a bit basically we're gonna run uh, this artifact and then give a little bit of time make sure it's up and running then we just issue this curl command uh, exactly like we did uh, here locally and we're gonna grab this uh, key pattern or, or keyword up if it works then we can we can assume the application uh, this application build process was was successful that's what we're going to do all right cool all right 
Uh, we had a smoke test uh, in place now, so uh, let's um, go ahead to the uh, next uh, job, uh, cold quality. <clears throat> so we had a smoke test, right? But actually, that's not good enough. Uh, as we know, most project projects should have had a uh, consistent cold style to follow some conventions or, or, or best practice in the, in the industry. Uh, there are multiple tools available out there that can help with analyzing the code to tell uh, if the code respects the standards or or uh, the code style um, or not. Uh, these tools typically do a uh, static uh, code analysis as the inspection is performed on the files in the project without you know uh, rewinding or, or compiling the code, etc. Uh, in contrast, uh, there are also a list of tools that can uh, that 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 do uh, dynamic analysis, which typically run the code in order to perform some inspections. All in all, there are many tools out there uh, that serve different purposes. Uh, in this demo, I will I will use one of these tools that can be uh, used uh, uh, for uh, Java projects, uh, which is called uh, PMD. Uh, here, uh, this guy, uh, PMD. Uh, it's a um, extensible uh, cross-language static code analyzer. Uh, uh, PMD uh, can help us to uh, find out and use the variables, problematic code blocks, and overall to uh, uh, enforce uh, accept the best practices. Uh, out of box. Uh, it has uh, it has a large set of predefined uh, rules. Um, you are uh, you know uh, also free to add uh, new rules as needed. So if we click the documentation and um, rule reference and Java rules, as you can see, uh, best practices those um, what I mentioned uh, are the predefined out of box uh, rules we can use. Right, so how do we how do we uh, use this PMD uh, for our project? So PMD was already installed in this Java uh, demo app uh, project. Uh, let me quickly show you uh, how does it work. Right, so in back to IntelliJ. So in order to run PMD from the terminal, uh, all I have to do. Uh, is to uh, use the Gradle wrapper uh, again, uh, Gradle D, uh, sorry, Gradle W uh, again. So what I need to do is dot slash Gradle uh, wrapper uh, PMD main, which is um, <clears throat> uh, will 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 test the main codes code. Also, uh, beside uh, besides PMD main, we also want to test the test. Uh, classes so we're going to include PMD test basically you're going to test the, the 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 test classes which uh, were defined right here the, the main code is in the uh, by the way the main and uh, test code were stored in under uh, source directory and I'm uh, going to include these two command these two command uh, or two arguments to test both main and test code all right so let's hit enter and the pmd gonna run the test and you can see the build was successful and it, it took two seconds to review the code and we got uh, everything looks good all right so how do we uh, verify uh, this pmd works as expected so let's go back to the uh, best practices so let's find one to verify what about this system print uh, command basically these um, <clears throat> system print uh, command is used to uh, for debugging like this guy and these one uh, these uh, rule basically a uh, PMD help us to, to uh, ana uh, uh, analyze to make sure uh, because these lines is primarily for debugging a uh, PMD gonna make sure it's not gonna sh uh, uh, it, it will be disabled basically will not sh showing debugging information you know or prod prod 
um, application, right? So what we can do, we can include these system print commands in our code and let's verify if uh, PMD is able to identify this problem, right? So let me copy this uh, simple um, print command to uh, to our application code. So for example, uh, cars application, let's put it something here uh, in the class like here. Let's add this one <clears throat> and to w before we run the PMD command, we need to like like how we need to use this rule, right? So how do we use that? Here it shows use this rule by referencing it. So we're gonna copy uh, this rule and put it in our P <clears throat> PMD rule set here. PMD rule set XML file. We are gonna include this rule by referencing it right here. All right, so once we add it here, so let's run the same command one more time to see what we got. Gradle wrapper PMD main and PMD test. Hit enter. Uh oh, you see here the build failed, so it found something. So, like I mentioned, it finds these system printout uh, print commands because it did not follow the best practices that's what that's that's um what ex what we're expected to see right cool that's basically what um what uh, we tested how we're going to use it in our pipeline so now we we understand how do we uh, uh, use this PMD uh, tool. Let's jump to or back to our pipeline. And uh, here I added another job called code quality. And it also belongs to test stage. And I'm also going to use the, the open JDK 12 Alpine version as the uh, Docker image. And I'm going to uh, gonna run these uh, Gradle PMD main and PMD test exactly as what I did in our local for testing, right? And then uh, after that, we're gonna store the results uh, uh, of the, or the output of these PMD commands uh, to this location. Build reports PMD here. Reports PMD here. We can see uh, what's going on, right? Cool. Um, let's continue on to move to the next one uh, unit test. So that's gonna be uh, the three jobs uh, included in the testing uh, test stage. Uh, let's take a look right here. As we know, uh, another common stage when building CI pipeline is the unit test. Unit tests are responsible for testing specific units of the code, typically only uh, one class. The execution time is extremely fast and they give instant feedback. A common concept you will hear uh, when discussing testing uh, is so-called uh, testing pyramid. Uh, it takes different forms or shapes, but always what at the bottom of the test pyramid, you will find its unit test. Uh, why is the reason simple? Uh, they run extremely fast, as I mentioned, and they don't have um, a lot of preconditions and they don't need the entire application. Cheap and easy to write and execute, um, basically. All right, unit test working. Uh, doesn't necessarily uh, necessarily guarantee the entire application works. However, they are a very important level and they are present practically in any CI pipelines. Uh, let me show you a uh, example on in our demo app. So here, uh, going to um, um, Postman 
as you can see in their statistics, there is the function called average fleet age. So if you click send, it returns this value. Basically, go back to IntelliJ, uh, the source, uh, if you go to source, uh, uh, main, and statistic controller, you can review this class. Basically, it just calculate it just grab all the um, the card information from uh, this command and it's average out the um, the age uh, right here the build age here here and here so what this unit unit test does so we can see the test cases basically it just makes sure these function or these cock these average uh, average fleet age these these function the calculation works um, the the result of this calculation is correct so what it does if you go to uh, test and enter uh, services it, you can see the the test cases uh, it's generated basically you can include uh, whatever test cases like here uh, you can include uh, one car to 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 uh, as test case you can include multiple cars like two cars uh, to make sure basic based based on these two tests to make sure the uh, the unit that that functionality works that class uh, the calculation works expected the calculation result is accurate is is correct all right so let's test it out basically what you can do uh, normally you can run uh, so let me stop this uh, application first. So normally what you can do, you can run uh, unit tests uh, through um, Gradle. Uh, if you see under verification and test, you can double click and the, the unit tests being kicked out automatically. But uh, for our pipeline, we, we need to um, uh, run or the unit tests from the command line, right? So here we got the, 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 the data. So another way to run that uh, besides this way, double click the test and the verification via Gradle, we can run from the command line um, here by issuing Gradle wrapper test, hit enter. So it's same thing, it's gonna kick off the, the, the unit test cases and give you a result. Here we can see everything was successful. It shows build successful. All right. So let's change something to verify if the uh, what if it go wrong. So for example, what we can do, we can do uh, uh, the in the test case here we can change the value. Uh, for example, in the two cars test case, we can change the value to something else from 15 to 16, for example, and run the test again, then the unit test will fail. So let's see, um, run the command again. It will return fail here, right? Build failed. And here, if you click uh, this uh, index.html, you can see uh, why it's failed. Uh, here, uh, you can open this uh, by Chrome, and you can see uh, why it's failed, failed tests to cars, right? So that's basically unit test. And let me, let me change it back to uh, what was right here. I change back to 50. All right. So, additionally, what uh, GitLab CI uh, is capable of is to understand reports that are formatted in JUnit formats. Uh, you will see uh, the uh, the JUnit. Um, actually, let me let me go here and re reports and the uh, build reports and tests um, here oh sorry packages 
Okay, here. So enter、uh, reports,、uh, build reports, and test results, and you can see all those .xml file that are all J unit J unit uh, uh, result file. So,、uh, like I mentioned, what、uh, GitLab CI is capable of、uh, additionally is to understand reports、uh, that are formatted in J unit formats, and and so.、Uh, That's what we're gonna try here, uh, and back to our GitLab CI that YAML. So when we build、uh, this job, uh, unit test, so it's also、uh, again belongs to、uh, this test stage. This is our、uh, last job, uh, uh, inside of this、uh, test stage. We're gonna again use OpenJDK 12 Alpine version as the 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 image, and we're gonna. Uh, issue this command grad gradle wrapper、uh, test to kick it off the the unit test and we we're gonna、uh, keep the artifact、uh, like to make by by the way to make sure the、um, result will be saved every time we add this command when always so we're gonna keep the artifact under the、uh, this pass build reports tests here. Right, and as I mentioned,、uh, because GitLab is able to、uh, understand the J unit formats, I'm also gonna、uh, add these reports J unit and、uh, put the location of the uh, these um, these files because there are multiple、uh, XML J unit format files out out there. I don't want to include every one like manually. That's why I just put a star dot、uh, XML right here. All right, so、um, that's basically it. Let's、uh, command it out and、um, push it to the GitLab to see uh, um, how it's going so far. Right. So let's go back here and comment it by issuing added.、Um, Added、um, build and test stages. All right, commit. And then we're gonna push it to、uh, GitLab. And okay, the push is done. Let's jump to. GitLab and here,、uh, let me just.、Um, uh, you see, here is already the job is running. So let's give it a little bit time to see how it goes. All right. All right. As you can see, the pipeline、uh, was created successfully.、Uh, the latest one. Here we go. And let's go into it and see what's going on. And we can see uh, they uh, there were.、Um, Two、uh, stages that we have uh, defined.、Um, one was build, the other was test. And inside of test, there were three jobs:、uh, smoke test, code quality, and unit test. So looks good. All passed、uh, successfully. And as I mentioned,、uh, GitLab CI、uh, is able to understand J unit formats, right? So that's why uh, here um, in the menu, besides pipeline jobs, and you can see another、uh, option called tests. So if you click that, and that's basically what the unit uh, unit test uh, results uh, uh, GitLab、uh, interprets. So it understands the format. So if you click that. So you can see all the test result right here. That's what we defined back to IntelliJ. We define here reports J unit and all the XML files. So because、uh, it's pretty pretty cool, huh? So because、um, J、um, Git GitLab CI understand、uh, the format, so you don't have to jump to another place to review the results. You can see、uh, on your pipeline directly、uh, right here. View results in detail. And you got the detail. All right, pretty cool. Then、uh, let's move to the next stage, which it's、uh, deploy. All right. 
As we planned, we're going to deploy these application to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, right? So the question comes to how do we how do we deploy it from uh, GitLab CI? Um, so we need to talk about some preparation um, before we are able to, to, to do that. So for uh, automating this process, we're going to depend on AWS CLI. Um, additionally, as we are creating an artifact uh, for an app, it's, it's not possible directly to upload it to, uh, to AWS when it comes to uh, the service Elastic Beanstalk. We need it to store the artifact to S3, uh, which is AWS Simple Storage Service. Um, so uh, here comes what, what we need to do step by step. Firstly, we need to uh, we needed to upload the artifact. Uh, you mean uh, you know the, the jar file to S3 using uh, AWS CLI, and then we're gonna instruct Elastic Beanstalk to take that artifact that we have just uploaded to S3 and to deploy to our uh, prod environment. Um, that's uh, let's let's jump back to our IntelliJ, and here we go. That's um, comes to uh, this job, I call it deploy, and it belongs to uh, a stage equals deploy, right? And because we're gonna depend on AWS CLI, we are gonna need a image that contains AWS CLI. That's why I pick uh, this image, uh, benched slash AWS CLI. So this bench basically is the name of the author who published uh, this image. Um, and another thing to note is uh, this line. Uh, some Docker images provide an entry point. Um, this makes it easy when uh, you're running the image uh, to directly interact with that specific tool um, or application. But for GitLab CI's, these sometimes cause this problem. So for that reason, what we need to do, we need it to uh, override the entry point and set it to uh, empty uh, for any image that has an entry point. Uh, how do we do it? Do that? Here we go. Uh, we just uh, override the entry point to empty like this. All right. So uh, just for now, don't worry about these two scripts yet. Basically, we need to uh, install some uh, some utilities. One is curl, the other is JQ. I'll explain JQ. Uh, 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 shortly, basically JQ is the the lightweight uh, and flexible command line JSON processor uh, uh, to quickly extract data from JSON. Um, all right, and let's quickly jump to script directly. The, the main uh, aspect of the uh, of this job. So, uh, like we uh, planned, we're gonna uh, upload our artifact to uh, to um, S3 first, right? But when, uh, as we know, when it comes to, uh, to AWS, AWS works with regions. It's always a good idea to, to specify what specific region we're gonna use first. Uh, that's why I put this line first here. It's called AWS configure set region US hyphen east hyphen two. Basically it tells, it specifies US east two region is the region we're gonna work on. Right now, it comes to another problem is that we, if we simply just issue this command, AWS will have no idea um, who we are, right? Um, so how do we uh, solve that? So uh, if you watch my uh, uh, other sessions for Terraform, I believe you already know uh, what has to be done. So basically, we're we're gonna need it. Uh, we're gonna need to create an ID on AWS through uh, IAM, which is uh, Identity and Access Management. Uh, we need to uh, create an ID and grant uh, grant necessary permission to that ID uh, to get access uh, AWS. So uh, AWS knows who we are um, that way. All right. So we know what we have to be what has to be done. So let's go there. And another thing, uh, another preparation has to be done is we know we have to upload the artifact to S3 so that we have to create a bucket in S3. 
So, okay, that two steps, let's uh, uh, do it one by one. So let's jump to uh, AWS console. Firstly, uh, we need to create a bucket to store our artifact, right? So here we go. I already created one, as you can see, it's called uh, cars-api-zz, all right? So this this is the bucket the or the uh, artifact will be stored, to, all right? And, and next thing, let's create an ID uh, for access. So let's go to uh, IAM. Here we go. And you can see already create an ID uh, uh, called GitLab CI. We're going to use this ID to uh, get access um, uh, AWS. And for this ID, uh, we have to grant it uh, necessary permission to access firstly, because we're going to uh, uh, upload or artifact to S3, so we need access to S3. Another thing is we need uh, administrator access to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, all right? So here we go. And uh, another thing is once you generate the ID, you will get the secret key and, and access key. That's what we needed to uh, to uh, to use to get access um, um, AWS, right? So basically, once you create on your end, when you create an uh, ID, you you will see that uh, uh, access key and private key being generated along with the ID. You will need to store that somewhere uh, on your local. We're going to use that. So here, if you click the uh, security credentials, you will see that. Basically, um, store those IDs. We're going to use it shortly. All right. Uh, cool. That's pretty much the preparation. Uh, then we're let's jump back to IntelliJ. And here, as you can see, um, we're uh, I, I defined a, 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 a couple of error variables. So because, as you remember, uh, the uh, uh, access key, secret key, we just uh, we just created. Uh, we need to store somewhere. But we do not want to store them as the plain uh, plain uh, text on the code in the in the code. Uh, for example, here we define a variable and give give the, the like the private key. Uh, we don't want to do that because it's plain plain um, text. Apparently, it's the security uh, violation, right? So what we can do here for for GitLab, so we can do is here. So let's go to GitLab console. And just click settings and click CICD. And there is option called variables. And if you expand here, and here you can see you can uh, deploy uh, store your variable uh, like uh, sensitive variables uh, right here. As you can see, I define three variables one is AWS access key ID. And another is AWS secret access key, and the, uh, the the last one is S3 buckets. Basically, here this is like it's gonna be um, um, encrypted, and you once you it's it's like a, a global variable. Once you define and store your value, that like when you uh, like the key, private key, uh, the access ID, you can store some uh, here. And then you are once you store it here, uh, you're able to call the variables from your uh, uh, GitLab uh, CI uh, YAML configuration, right? So as you can see, first, firstly, uh, there is the S3 bucket variable I defined and put the value name, basically that name, uh, I uh, the bucket name uh, right here. So that's why when I uh, back to IntelliJ and I call uh, go back here build deploy uh, sorry go to deploy and here uh, I call this variable at three buckets basically that's the it points to the the buckets that we just created on the all right and here for artifact name uh, this is uh, it's a it's a global mar uh, variable I defined uh, on the on, on the beginning of our scripts. All right, cool. So 
this is the first tab, and then we're gonna move to uh, an elast elastic beanstalk, right? So like 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 we planned, we uploaded uh, the artifact to S3. Now we need to uh, uh, instruct elastic beanstalk uh, to take that artifact and and create uh, and deploy to our prod environment, right? So let's see how are we gonna do that. Cool. For uh, elast Elastic Beanstalk, first of all, uh, we needed to create a new application version. And then we needed to update the environment. Uh, here we go. Uh, let me uh, point you to the documentation. Create application version and uh, update environment. So I shared uh, these uh, documentation uh, for these steps in the description if you need some references. All right. Uh, let's <clears throat> quickly jump to the advanced console and see to see how do we create an elastic beanstalk uh, application manually first. I guess that will give you a body, better idea how are we gonna do that through a uh, uh, command line, right? So here, let's jump to um, <clears throat> AWS uh, console and we're, as we mentioned, we we chose US East 2 as the uh, as the region we're gonna work on. So US East 2, right? So just search for uh, Elastic uh, Beanstalk. And then uh, we're here. So let's create an application manually by creating this create application button. Let's give a name as uh, cars-api, all right? And in the platform section, we're gonna choose uh, Java because it's a uh, Java Spring Boot application, right? And for the platform branch, I will uh, choose Java 8 running on 64-bit six, uh, Amazon Linux. And I will just use the recommended uh, platform version, right? <clears throat> and when it comes to the application code section, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, select a sample application uh, it's not the application we uh, wanted to deploy, but it's just a simple uh, sample app to to just to see how this environment works, right? And then let's create uh, create application. <clears throat> it will take a little bit of time to uh, to uh, spin up these uh, service, so let's. Uh, be patient and uh, give it a little bit of time to run it through. All right, uh, the uh, Elastic Beanstalk service is up running now. Uh, for the sample application, as you can see, the house showing green, and there is a running version of the sample application. All right, uh, let's jump to uh, jump back to Italian J. Uh, this was what we're gonna do. We're gonna issue this command to create an application and uh, we will give the application name as what we define in the variable uh, here app name cars API right just exactly what we did on the uh, on, uh, we tested on, on manually on AWS console and we're gonna include a version label I guess now it makes more sense to uh, understand why I include uh, this version uh inside our artifact underscore name variable right so if you remember uh, uh it comes with a huge list of predefined environmental variables for GitLab CI. uh let's jump to uh uh documentation and here we go if you just search for GitLab predefined uh, environmental variable you will get a huge list so here for my uh, case, I just pick the CI pipeline uh, underscore IID. So basically, this is uh, the project level I I internal ID of the current pipeline. This ID is unique only within the current project. So you are, uh, I, I used this variable to uh, help me to identify uh, the version of the artifact. You are free to choose others, right? This basically just, uh, 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 
helps you to figure out if a version is newer or older than the previous version, right? Well, well, so far, uh, these by themselves will not change IntelliJ. Uh, so let's go back to IntelliJ. So with this uh, command, create application version. So by this by by itself will not change what is being deployed, what is currently being executed on the processor, right? So it will just create a new version, right here. Create application version, like it will just create a new version, but this version will not be active. So for this reason, we have to execute another command uh, down here. Uh, update environment right so uh, by the way for the uh, for the previous command elixir search uh, let's finish up so create application version and I will give the name of the application as what I defined in the in the in the beginning uh, app name is car app API and have an API right so and then we're gonna uh, add a version label because in the in the artifact underscore name I already uh, uh, used uh, I already used these uh, environment uh, uh, predefined environmental variable to uh, identify the version I'm gonna use the same thing for for uh, these uh, version label and then we're gonna uh, take the uh, artifact that uh, has been uploaded to S3 bucket uh, so so we're gonna uh, instruct uh, um, I, uh, elect beanstalk service to take that artifact that that were stored in the s3 bucket so how do we call that so we do uh, we include these arguments hyphen have source bundle and s3 bucket equal to the s3 bucket uh, 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 variable that we define in the uh, in the GitLab CI uh, variables remember uh, back here to uh, GitLab CI and enter CI CD uh, settings CI CD and we define three uh, sensitive uh, environment variables. One of one of those were at three buckets, right? So go back to IntelliJ and at three key will be the uh, the artifact name, uh, which is defined right here in the beginning of the uh, artifact, right? Cool. Moving to the next uh, command, uh, app the environment, as I mentioned, for um, uh, for updating uh, for updating environment to make this uh, version active, we need to run this command: uh, AWS Elastic, uh, uh, Elastic Beanstalk update environment, and I'll give the same name of the application uh, right here and the uh, environment name we're going to call it production and the version uh, label is still we're going to use that predefined uh, uh, environment variable ci underscore pipeline underscore iid all right so uh, let's stop here uh, uh, finally in the in the in the deploy process there is still a small uh, small change uh, that has to be uh, uh, taken care of so far, we've uh, zoom, let's go back to the beginning of the uh, of the uh, configuration. Uh, so far, we've assumed that artifact will be called cars hyphen API hyphen version the uh, jar, right? This is how the artifact uh, artifact will be built. But it doesn't mean that we can keep it that way. It is because now we have a variable name inside of the uh, the, the artifact name variable right so we have to rename the artifact as well in order to rename the artifact we are gonna use the move command that comes to uh, the uh, uh, this section in the build stage uh, as I mentioned uh, remember earlier I said I will come back to explain what these uh, lines are about so let's start with this guy uh, move uh, that's basically what we need to do uh, as I explained we need to rename the artifact 
uh, from uh, build uh, libs cars hyphen API jar to whatever here. All right, we now understand why we have to uh, use uh, use move command right here. Uh, I guess you will ask, what about the other three lines right here above? Uh, what are they all, all about? So as part of the deployment process, we wanted to make sure that the version we have built and deployed is actually available in production environments. So how do we automate this process so that we don't have to uh, go to a AWS console every time to check it out? Uh, if you uh, open um, uh, Postman, uh, uh, by the way, so, uh, we have to um, spin up these uh, application first by double click this boot run, right? Just to make sure uh, the application is up running and then we jump to Postman. So in this API um, health uh, in, uh, info, so firstly health, we, if we uh, Click send. We should be able to see to make to ch to to know uh, the status of application. As you can see here, it's up and running, right? And then in the info API. So basically, um, uh, it's it's not as you can see here. Uh, let me run it again. So you as you can see here, it did not uh, uh, populate with any data, right? Uh, but what we can do here is to uh, replace this information like this, this, this. Replace if, if, if this information with actual data during the process of the, the, the build process. And, and when the application is deployed, we will be able to see, so that we, we will be able to see what version this application is currently on. Just in case, uh, you're wondering where these variables come these variables come from so let's jump back to uh, IntelliJ so basically it's there so if you go to source main and resources and double click application.yaml and you can see under info section this is where it's uh, actually been uh, defined all right uh, this is a uh, uh, these are, uh, you see, these, these are just uh, placeholder here. Uh, we are going to replace them in the uh, GitLab CI. That's basically what uh, these uh, go back to uh, the uh, GitLab, uh, the GitLab CI, the YAML uh, uh, configuration. That's basically what these three lines um, uh, do for us is you set a Unix command to replace the the uh, the uh, information like you see here replace the CI underscore pipeline underscore ID to the variables right here right same thing here I replace uh, this guy to the variable this guy to the variable. Those are all like predefined environment variables, uh, like here, CI commit underscore short. Let's go back to Chrome and predefined, let's search for that. Here we go, you see, for example, CI underscore comment underscore short SRJ. This, the first eight characters of CI comment underscore SRJ. And this, this is the common revision the project is built for. All right, uh, that's basically what these, uh, jump back to IntelliJ, these three lines uh, for is basically to replace the uh, the uh, variable of uh, the value of the variable to something we need it. All right. All right. Now we are uh, ready to uh, deploy the application and uh, verify the application version after the deploying is done. So how are we going to do that? Here we go. And how do we going to verify? We're going to use curl like like you mentioned. Uh, here uh, back to the deploying uh, job in the uh, deploying stage 
and as mentioned, we included uh, uh, we installed two uh, utilities. One is curl, the other uh, was JQ, right? So for curl, we're gonna use curl to verify the uh, version of the application after deployment is done. Uh, that's why I put in here. <clears throat> but how do we gonna get the domain name like this right here? That's basically uh, why I install JQ utility uh, right here. Basically, I'll explain uh, shortly. Uh, uh, so uh, after we uh, kick off the pipeline, so it, it, I, I, I believe it's better to understand over there. So let's just uh, stop here. So it, as you can see, uh, we uh, create application version and then update the environment and give uh, uh, give it uh, like 45 seconds to uh, make sure the deployment is done, the application is up and running, and then we uh, implement some uh, curl uh, command to verify uh, if the uh, the firstly we verify the uh, in the info uh, like back here in the info uh, API. To, to check the version right here. And the next thing we gonna verify in the house to make sure the application is ever running. And remember, we gonna grab the up stat, uh, state. If the state uh, status is showing up, we're gonna assume the application is up and running, right? Pretty straightforward. So let's stop right here uh, and commit this change and to see if the pipeline is uh, is passed or not. So let's commit this change. I'll say add it deploy stage commit it and then we're ready to push it to GitLab repository. Click push. All right, push it then. So let's jump back to kick, uh, uh, GitLab repository. And let's do a refresh. <clears throat> and you can see the new uh, pipeline is running. So let's, uh, as you can see here, uh, there's a new uh, deploy stage being added. Let's give it a little, little bit of time to uh, build the pipeline to see uh, if everything works as expected. Well, uh, the build was done, but unfortunately, it returned an, an error, it, uh, error message. It failed at deploying stage. Let's take a look uh, here. Okay, it says um, the error happened at this step, um, update environment, and it says an error occurred when calling the update environment operation no environment found for environment name equal production okay that's something uh, we can fix to the uh, on the uh, AWS side so let's go there um, here uh, environment uh, that's what the problem is so here the the previous the testing uh, sample application the environment name a name is like cars api hyphen in env uh, there is no uh, environment name uh, called production that's why we got that error so what we can do we can create a new environment here so again it's a web uh, server environment so i'm gonna click select and here we give a name cars api and uh, environment name here we're gonna call it production Domain, again, uh, I'm going to leave domain empty because uh, it will be auto-generated when it's being uh, deployed, right? And um, platform, I'm going to, again, choose Java and running Java 8 running on 64-bit Amazon Linux and use the recommended uh, uh, version. Uh, it's, I'm still going to use the sample application, all right? So it just create environments. Uh, this time, I believe uh, once it's uh, being created,
the uh, back to the GitLab CI it, when the the build pro, uh, the pipeline is able to find that environment, uh, because we this time we give the name production, right? Cool. Let's give a little t little bit time to uh, uh, have you finished. Then we can move forward. All right, as expected, this time the deploy uh, the deploy job uh, was uh, successful. As you can see here, it's showing job succeeded, right? And um, sorry, so here because I already create a variable like uh, like C name here, so you won't be able to to see the output. So I have to show you uh, the the previous pipeline. Uh, uh, that I built while I was testing uh, this demo, so so I can see you, you can you can see over there what I'm talking about. How do we parse the uh, these uh, JSON using uh, JQ utility? So here, go back to CSD for going to the first pipeline and click deploy. They say basically same thing. Uh, I create this pipeline ahead of time for testing to make sure it works right so you as you can see here once we uh, run this command app, update environment command what it returns in this json formats it returns a c name property here it's already basically this c name include the the d uh the dns that we needed to uh uh to get access uh, here in IntelliJ, uh, here we need this DNS name to run the curl command, right? That's why I use C name. Basically, here I use uh, the JQ uh, utility. So once I run this command like this, right? This is exactly what we saw here run this command once I run this command this is the expected return so I'm gonna parse this return because I only care about this guy line 55 I need to parse these DNS out for my next step right so that's why I just use a pipe and JQ and the the uh, the area uh, the section I'm interested is dot C name and I'm gonna get a row output so basically once I, uh, I I put this to a variable you see here a dollar sign uh, and to cover the whole command right here so basically once the these uh, DNS pattern uh, string um, is uh, is parsed out it go it gonna be stored to a variable called C name and here in the following I gonna I gonna uh, call that variable C name right cool and that's pretty much it so in, as you can see the the deploying stage was successful and the curl commands get the uh, let's go back to that uh, the last uh, pipeline so it's showing field because it's failed and the post deploy the next stage i'm going to talk about so don't worry about it for now so let's go to deploy stage and as you can see we got this information when we grab the CI pipeline ID right here and then we also grab up and it's showing up right here all right pretty cool let's move to the next stage uh, API testing all right uh, after the deploying is done successfully we like to add another layer of testing uh, which is called api testing uh, basically api testing ensures that the api uh, exposed by an application works properly um, before we move to uh, these uh, post deploy stage uh, <clears throat> talking about this api testing job here so let's jump to postman to see how do we verify api manually all uh, right or test the api manually so go back to uh, postman all right so this is what what we can do because now we've deployed our application on aws uh, elastic beanstalk right so we should be able to, to test it out of via postman exactly same uh like what we did 
um, when they t when we test them on local. Remember, it's for uh, uh, local host. That's uh, local host. We test in uh, HTTP uh, local host uh, port five thousand, right? That comes to the environment. Um, remember when we import the configure uh, the collection uh, uh, file for Postman? We upload imported two files. One is the collection. The other is for environment, and that's where we got this local host. And basically, in this environment configuration, we uh, just define a variable called uh, base URL and then put the value of our local uh, URL, like localhost five port five thousand, to assign to this uh, base URL. Then we are able to do, to run uh, our collection. You see here is called this base URL variable. So we're able to get results. Now, same thing. We just need to create another environment. Mm, by clicking new and we uh, for me I call it production and what I have to do same thing I create another the same variable called base URL but here I'm gonna assign instead of our local URL I'm gonna assign the uh, basically the uh, loc the the um, the DNS we just scrapped from the previous step right here by JQ utility so what we can do we are gonna copy paste that that uh, DNS name or here because you cannot see the the the, the DNS name uh, you can go to AWS and here we go we got the URL DNS name right here so let's copy here this URL and put it in Postman right here right here and save so once it's saved we're ready to test it out so same thing, we go back to collection and just randomly pick an API and let's run it. Remember here, right now it's still pointing to the local host in, uh, uh, environments. Let's switch to production environment that we just created and then click send. Here we go, we got the, uh, the return from these API. So that's pretty much what, how we uh, test out uh, the our production environment, right? Same thing to add car, click send. We got we got the result right here, right? And same thing for health, uh, send we got up and info. Oh, here I met uh, I hard coding the um, the local host URL, so we have to change it back. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change it back to what it's supposed to be here as and run it here we go and we got the version commit branch all those information that we defined in the previous step all right cool and now it comes to the uh, uh, question how we're gonna run this from base basic how are we gonna integrate these pro this API uh, um, procedure to our CI CD pipeline or GitLab CI pipeline, right? Because here apparently Postman is not able to run from uh, command line directly. How are we gonna do that? Um, before we talk about that, we have, an, an, have another thing to show you. Um, we can um, create some test case on Postman first. So how do we create a test case? Like for for example, this guy. Uh, if everything works as is expected, like this get all cars uh, with these URL. So if everything works expected, we click send, we got a, a return with status code 200, right? So that's something, uh, everything work as expected. But what if we for testing purposes, we just change something else. We just what bit we change it to something else in the URL and we hit it send again. We got a 404 error. Apparently, we, we will get a 404 because this URL does not exist. This API does not exist, right? So we can use this one, uh, this methodology to create a simple test case. So I'll change back to cars and make sure it's working. 
right? And we can what we can do we can create a task case from uh, we can we can create a task case uh, from a postman to check the status of uh, or of our uh, uh, API of this specific API and then we're gonna we can export it out and integrate that task case to our uh, CI pipeline uh, that's how we're gonna do that mm, let's see uh, firstly let's create a task case over here on postman all right uh, as we discussed uh, I'm gonna create a very actually extremely simple test for these API specifically. So what we're gonna do, I just click tests here, and here in the snippet snippets, there are already a bunch of um, options we can choose. It's out of box. I'll choose uh, this guy status code code is two hundred. So it's automatically generate the code the, the the test case for me, right? So if I run that and click test result and you can see here is we got a pass and status code is 200 right same thing <clears throat> if we change the URL uh, to uh, something random and click send we're gonna gotta fail uh, so just make sure it works right I'll change it back and and uh, we got a uh, status code is 200 right now the next thing I'm gonna depend on we're gonna use another <coughs> uh, uh, command to a code Newman so what is Newman so here Newman it's a powerful command line collection runner for Postman so as we already discussed so we cannot just integrate whatever we created the test case we created over uh, uh, postman to uh, or CSD pipeline because postman cannot be executed on command line so that's why we're going to depend on Newman it's a powerful command line collection runner for postman so what we can do here go back here to uh, <clears throat> we, we what we what we gonna do we're gonna export uh, this guy out uh, this collection we're gonna export this collection out because I did some uh, uh, additional configurations to add a test case I gonna so firstly I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna export this collection out <laughs> export then I will so f I will gonna Give a name of this export, and I will store it to uh, download, right? And then <clears throat> let's go to download. So I will just copy this guy and move it to the um, to the uh, or ripple the cars had an API and now paste over here so this is the cars uh, API post um, uh, collection we just export from the from postman all right and then let's jump back to IntelliJ <clears throat> we can uh, talk about um, as you can see here uh, the uh, files here and we can talk about API tests uh, for our next stage uh, post deployment uh, uh, post deploy right so because as I mentioned we're gonna use a uh, a command line tool called newman for a postman to run on, on from command line right so I'm gonna pick a image uh, which contains newman so that's why I picked this image again same thing like the <coughs> issue I mentioned so we have to override the entry point to empty for anything for any image that contain has a, a, a default entry point all right and then <clears throat> we're gonna uh, we, we come to the uh, the um, 
the main aspect of these uh, this job. Uh, we're gonna run new man. So firstly, we check out the, the, the version of new man, and then we're gonna run these collection. So as you can see here, so I will run this collection. So cars API postman collection, right? And then the environment is production, right? And the basically that's what we have defined uh, over there in Postman. And then we're gonna generate the reports and JUnit reports and <coughs> code is and the new man reports the HTML. Uh, something like this. And then we're gonna uh, uh, s s make sure the art artifact is stored as always to this location, pa uh, Newman. And the reports, we're gonna have a JUnit format reports as Newman report XML. All right, cool. Let's. Uh, Commit this, ten, uh, commit this change. I'll say um, added API testing job and commit. And then we're gonna push it, push the change to our repo. <clears throat> All right, let's see how it goes. So back to Here, a, a new pipeline is being uh, is running. So let's give it a little bit of time to to see how it goes. Cool. Sorry, one more correction here. As the command, new main command uh, stays here. So besides the collection, we gonna need uh, environment .json as well. That's why. So we need to go back to uh, Postman and export the environments we just create for production, right? So just click that and so firstly save whatever uh, uh, change you did uh, inside of these in these uh, production uh, variable uh, like base URL, save and then click this three dot and export. So you will export the same thing to uh, the uh, your code base here uh, production post man underscore environments and we're gonna uh, r refer to uh, these file as the environment uh, argument and then we we'll move to the reporters the reporter is gonna be three uh, places Firstly, it's going to be CLI. Basically, means whatever result you're going to report to our CLI, so we can see directly from our job, right? And besides CLI, we also want to report it to other uh, formats like HTML. So that's why I put in HTML extra and JUnit. And so because we want we add the HTML and JUnit reporter, we need to export those result out. Right. That's why we put in these two arguments: report HTML extra export. We're gonna export to a place to store uh, these file. So we're gonna export to Newman slash report HTML. Uh, same thing for uh, JUnit. We're gonna export as report XML format. And then we move to the artifact states. We're gonna make sure. Um, to create artifact every time, uh, so that we use when always um, syntax right here, and then the path we're gonna store those uh, results under Newman folder, and report is J J unit Newman report XML. All right, so let's save it and run the pipeline. So let's go back to the uh, Chrome, and we can see the pipeline actually works and if we go to the API testing we can see uh, because we we as reporter we use uh, CLI right that's why we see the result right here from our job and also we use uh, the uh, we're gonna create HTML format report and JUnit format XML format report they're being uh, stored under Newman folder right so go back to the previous page and if we if you click tests and you can see beside the unit test that we created in the previous 
uh, stage, we got API testing here. And if you click that, we got a result. Basically, that's the uh, the uh, test case we create. The status code uh, is 200 test case we created uh, created uh, over the uh, Postman, right? Cool. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's move to the the uh, last stage, uh, which is publishing. All right. All right, uh, now we have API testing in place. And uh, uh, if you want to publish the HTML reports, um, you have two options in GitLab. Uh, option one, you can publish the report as an artifact and re review it within the job, right? Or you can use GitLab pages to publish HTML reports. Uh, with uh, GitLab pages, you can just create and publish an HTML website, generate dashboards that contains your, uh, your, your test results. All right. So how do we do that? So let's jump to our uh, last uh, stage, publish. So I will create a job uh, called uh, pages, and it belongs to the stage publish, uh, which is the last one and, uh, we defined right here in the beginning of the configuration and then move to the uh, scripts. Uh, what we need to do, we need to create a folder called uh, public. And then um, because we do not have any uh, like uh, HTML uh, file out of box, but as you remember, when uh, in the previous uh, job uh, API testing, we create a, a, a HTML reports. Uh, remember here, reports, we had a CLI report reporter, we had a HTML reporter, and we have GUnit XML reporter, right? So we can use this HTML report reports as example. So that's how we're gonna do. We're gonna move these uh, HTML reports uh, from Newman hyphen report XML uh, HTML to public the the folder we just created. Uh, we're gonna move that uh, that that file to public index.html, and uh, of course we're gonna we're gonna need to uh, uh, load the artifact. The path is public, all right. So let's commit it and run the pipeline to see how it goes. All right, as you can see now, the pipeline uh, be was successful and it passed all the stages. Cool. And if you click uh, the last stage, publish, and you can see everything works as expected. So where are we gonna see that pages? Uh, here, you go to settings and click pages. And you can see w your pages are served under this location. And click that, you should be able to see the report uh, that was generated in the previous uh, 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 state uh, previous job right here all right cool that's pretty much what I want to share for uh, this session uh, I think uh, till now you should be uh, really good at um, a GitLab CI to know how it works uh, how do we how do you create from a simple pipeline to a, a real complicated um, um, uh, uh, pipeline for production with multi stages. All right. Um, think uh, these uh, these series session uh, helps you to understand uh, GitLab CI better. And um, thank you for watching. As always, uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Thank you for watching my video. If you think this video is helpful, you're more than welcome to leave any comments. Remember, sum up, subscribe my video, and also hit the notification bell. See you next time.